Today's lecture will cover restriction enzymes and their applications. Restriction enzymes are basic tools that are commonly used in various microbiology labs today. Basically, restriction enzymes are enzymes that cut DNA at specific nucleotide sequences. They can be imagined as tiny Pac-Men that scan the DNA and recognize specific nucleotide sequences and cut the DNA at those sites, making incisions through the sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA. Now, restriction enzymes are classified into a variety of types based on their size and the site at which it cuts the DNA. Restriction enzymes are commonly found in bacteria and are used as a defense mechanism against invading viruses. These restriction enzymes recognize any foreign DNA particles and cut those particles without affecting the host DNA. And this is how bacteria protect themselves against viruses. There are several applications of restriction enzymes which will be talked about at the end of this lecture. An example of a restriction enzyme is SCA1. SCA1 particularly recognizes the nucleotide sequence AGTACT. When SCA1 comes in contact with this nucleotide sequence on a DNA, it specifically cuts between the TNA on the 5' prime strand as well as the ANT on the 3' prime complementary strand, resulting in two DNA fragments, as seen here. Thus, SCA1 specifically recognizes the AGT-ACT sequence on a DNA and cuts it into two strands with blunt end. Blunt-ended molecules are molecules that terminate in base pairs, and this is not always desirable in molecular biology, as when using a DNA ligase molecule to attach two molecules into one, the yield is often significantly low. Also, while using restriction enzymes in cloning processes, blunt ends sometimes results in the inserted DNA being oriented in the opposite direction, which is undesirable. Another example of a restriction enzyme is ECOR1. ECOR1 specifically recognizes the nucleotide sequence GAATTC and its complementary sequence CTTAAG. When this enzyme comes in contact with the sequence of the DNA, it specifically cuts between the GNA of the 5' prime strand right here as well as the ANG of the 3' prime strand right here, resulting in two nucleotide fragments as seen here. Thus, ECOR1 specifically recognizes the GAATTC nucleotide sequence on a DNA and cuts the DNA into two fragments with sticky ends. In contrast to blunt ends, sticky ends generally have a stretch of unpaired nucleotide bases. They are cohesive and can be easily joined back together by DNA ligases. Since restriction enzymes produce different sticky ends, molecular biologists take advantage of this and can cut a DNA with two restriction enzymes and then add another DNA with ends that were created by those same restriction enzymes. Since the ends of these DNA molecules need to be complementary for the DNA ligase to work, the DNA or the two molecules can only be attached in a specific orientation, and this is very favorable to molecular biologists. A prime application of restriction enzymes is in gene cloning. Molecular biologists use specific restriction enzymes, such as ECOR1 as seen in the diagram, to cut bacterial plasmid producing sticky ends. Molecular biologists then use these same restriction enzymes to cut foreign DNA containing regions of interest also producing sticky ends. Since the sticky ends 
from the bacterial plasmid as well as the foreign DNA are complementary to each other. Upon hybridization with the DNA ligase, the foreign DNA with the particular region of interest is inserted into the bacterial plasmid, forming a recombinant DNA. Now, this recombinant DNA is inserted into a bacteria, and since bacteria grow and expand exponentially, uh, they will produce this DNA exponentially as well, uh, that would code for our protein of interest. So just to recapitulate uh, what restriction enzymes are, restriction enzymes are enzymes that cut DNA at specific nucleotide sequences and they are used in a variety of molecular biology labs and more specifically for gene cloning applications.